Okay, this is a, a very short video and it's a very brief history video because of the information available, but we're looking at the Hull Pirates. Now, they were formed in 2015 out of the leftovers of the Hull Stingrays. The Stingrays um, were in the Elite League and they were liquidated that summer. There were money issues towards the end of the Stingrays' existence, which is a regular occurring theme in British ice hockey. Um, in the space between June and August, because I believe that year, uh, the, the pre-season started in August that year, I seem to remember, so in the space of two and a half months, they formed a team, got it registered, formed a team, and got a squad together. That is madness. They got a roster together in two months. And they were allowed to join the, the EPIHL. And in their first season, they obviously they had a, a patchwork squad. I'm not going to belittle them, but the squad was thrown together at last minute. They finished ninth overall. So that's not bad, getting a team together and building a new team unity and a, and a new team identity, considering the Stingrays had their own identity, and getting the fans in whole to, to get on board. I do remember watching some of their away, uh, when they came to play us, Brattle Bees, away. They didn't bring many fans. I think the first game they played us away, they brought one fan down. As the the, the season went on and into the next, the second season, yeah, more fans were coming on, on the away trips, which was good to see that the locals in Hull with what had happened to the Stingrays, were willing to buy into the Pirates. That was good to see. Obviously, the EPIHL came to a unfortunate end. It's been mothballed. There are plans, possibly, to restructure the British Ice Hockey League structure with an EPIHL similar league, second tier, below the Elite League and above the National League, and we'll talk about that uh, at the end. But, with Manchester Phoenix going out of business midway through the season, and Guildford Flames and Milton Keynes Lightning going into the Elite League, there were only seven teams left, Hull being one of them. Hull, Sheffield and Telford, uh, Telford the Sheffield Steel Dogs, Steelers, um, they decided to to join the Division 1 North, the Morley Division, and the Bracknell Bees, the Basingstoke Bison, Peterborough Phantoms and Swindon Wildcats joined the Britain Division, which is the equivalent in the South. And so the EPIHL disappears. They've had a very successful spell in the NIHL. Very, very successful. Uh, they had a very good uh, first season getting to playoffs. Uh, and so far this season, they, they, they're one of the, the, the top three teams again. Um, the former EPIHL sides. Bracknell were the weakest of, of, of the seven that survived the collapse of the EPIHL. And as a Bracknell fan, I will have freely admit that. And we were knocked out in the first round of the playoffs by a, an NIHL team from the season before in the London Raiders. However... This season, we have definitely seen that that golfing class has continued. All the EPIHL sides are all in playoff positions um, and look certain to, to get to playoffs. There's no doubt on that. There's no, there's no questioning that. And this has raised questions about the, the longevity and, and, the, and the future of the NIHL structure as it currently stands and the sustainability. We've seen teams struggle this season and we've seen refereeing standards not being up to standard at the former EPIHL refereeing standards were across the board. So there are concerns about sustainability as it currently stands. Milton Keynes Thunder and the Invicta Dynamo is having financial issues this season, which I've documented on this channel. So if you've been watching this channel and you followed, and you're, or even if you're new, look at the Ice Hockey playlist and you'll see that I've done a few videos on those teams' crowdfunding to survive this season. And there's going to be a massive league restructuring in the summer. We know this. Now, they're currently owned by Shane Smith, a businessman from Rotherham, and Dominic Osborne, a former player of the Stingrays and a former player coach of the Pirates in their uh, early early days, and their head coach is Jason Hewitt. They play in green and black, very similar to the Stingrays, and that's their their playing history. Now the future. They have signalled their intention to join the EIHL, the Elite League, to replace the Edinburgh Capitals. The Edinburgh Capitals, I did videos on their demise and what happened to the Capitals. They went out of business, which meant, yes, the league is still bigger than what it was um, two seasons ago with, with Guildford and uh, Milton Keynes joining, but the Capitals have gone, and Milton Keynes are also struggling at this time, so it's not all rosy in the Elite League, and they have signalled their intention to go up. However, the current league structure in the NIHL, meetings are going to take place this summer. We know that the Elite League would have had meetings with some of the EPIHL sides that have gone down to the National League, including Bracknell, Peterborough, uh, the Sheffield Steel Dogs, possibly, if you want to have two teams in Sheffield, definitely Hull. There are some of the teams... Um, that were in the EPIHL system, that are now in the National League system, that have also had meetings with the EIHL over a future expansion of the league and, and, and also having uh, two-way contracts with players. We've seen a lot of players from the EPIHL teams go on two-way contracts with Elite League sides or be called up by Elite League sides as, as temporary cover. So there is uh, an argument for having affiliate teams in an affiliate league, the league below, but we'll see what happens. They've signaled their intention to go up. 
we also know that the league structure as it currently stands is going to change. So the, uh, the future is uncertain. The Hull Pirates will be here to stay. They're not going anywhere. They're doing very, very well with, with the ownership they have and the team they have. It's what league will they be playing in next year. Um, if they don't go to the Elite League next season, we know this league structure is going to change between the EPIHL and the NIHL. We know there is definitely going to be a structural change in how, um, where what league teams play in. And we, we're seeing Victor and Milton Keynes London may have to drop down to Division 2 South. Oh, yes. They have come out and said we're not sure if we can financially compete next season as it currently stands in the Division 1 system. Uh, the whole Pirates have signaled their intention to go up a level. So there's already teams that are going to have to drop down or go up a level. There's already that intention. And we've seen with the former EPI, EPIHL teams, they have bigger budgets. They have, they can sign the better players. They've got the better youth systems as well because they have more money as, as hockey clubs. They're more established. They've played at a higher level before. They've been, you've got to look at the Battle Bees being the former Super League champions, for example. Um, Swindon Wildcats dominated the EPIHL because they were in it from inception till, well, it mothballed. Uh, Peterborough have always had a good side, always been well-funded. Um, Telford... Okay, admittedly they had some money issues and their their rink is tiny, but in their in the last few years, the red hockey ownership, they have money again. The Sheffield Steel Dogs, um, you know, Sheffield is a hockey mag city. They have a beautiful rink. Um, there is some sort of a link, more of a link between the Steelers and the Steel Dogs than other uh, elite league and, and national league sides. They have a solid fan base that comes down whenever they used to play in the elite league, uh, the uh, English Premiership ice hockey. Their away fan support was great. Basingstoke, yes, they have rink issues and their longevity is, is what's going to happen, but they have been in the elite league. So yeah, there is definitely a, a gap in quality between the better teams and, and the rich teams and, and the not so rich teams, which is leading to the sustainability argument. And if Hull do go up, that will alter the structure in the north. It will. Um, but there we go. There's a brief little history. Uh, yes, they made playoffs last year and, and um, they had a good run in them. I think they got to the semi-finals. Uh, this year, they're looking likely to do the same. Uh, they're one of the stronger teams uh, out there. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the future. It's more of the future with the whole Pirates. They are here to stay. It's just what league they play in and what is the league structure going to look like. Uh, at the moment, we don't know. Uh, we don't know what the league structure is going to look like. And we don't know if they actually are going to join the elite league or not next, uh, next season. Uh, but what we do know is they are here to stay. Um, they are a great carry-on from the Hull Stingrays. Uh, the city of Hull was bought in. Um, I do see Hull Pirates jerseys at Brackle Bees games. There are some uh, northerners who've come down south for work or retirement who are wearing Stingrays and, and, and Pirates jerseys. And that's good to see that hockey is a big family. But there we go. Thank you very much for watching. It's a brief little history uh, for what I, I know about the Hull Pirates. I don't know a whole lot, but they've only been going four years. So the Elite League jump is a... It's a big, it's a big, it's a big jump. Um, Guildford Flames and Milton Keynes Lightning have been going for quite some time before they were allowed to join. The Bracknell Bees uh, uh, initially were invited to join the Elite League many years ago and declined at the time for financial reasons. They were like, we want to keep our budget a little bit more controlled. So there is some interesting stuff going on. Thank you very much for watching. I'll have some more videos for you soon.